I will speak about something that I've been dealing for in my mind for quite a long time. And uh, I think that um, it will encourage our life. It is found in the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verse 28, uh, 18. Jesus, in one of those warm Palestinian days, went into the synagogue. And when he got there, there was gospels filled with people. He stood up and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me. That's the first thing that he told them. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. In the old days, the visual anointing that God gave to Moses for, for his brother, it was made of olive oil plus four different uh, uh, extra aromas, and the five of them, they were mixed together and then, somehow, uh, Moses would bring Aaron in front of the people and get a scoop of that oil, pulling over his head, and the oil will flow right down the, uh, the beard of uh, Aaron and down to his clothes and all the way down. He was fully anointed. In other words, the oil was from the top of the head all the way down to the down to his feet. He was anointed. The reason why God gave Moses that commandment, it is because God wanted to make sure that the people of Israel knew that he, their, their priest was anointed or he was touched by the Spirit and the presence of the Lord. That was important because the people had to trust him. He was going to the Holy of Holies and he was going to pray for them. He was going to give the, all the uh, paraphernalia that had to be made and done in order for the people of Israel to grow in the spiritual life. He anointed me because I, uh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. To me... Anointing become, reminds me of Aaron and Moses. And I don't really like it. Maybe that's one of the reasons why I shave every day. Because I don't like the oil to flow down to my beard and goes down to my clothes. It was a little bit messy, wasn't it? But on the other hand, that was what God wanted. And Jesus stood up and he said, I am anointed. In other words, the same oil that was on Aaron way back, it is upon me right now. And he has anointed me for a purpose. I am not anointed just because I have nothing to do, but I have been anointed for a purpose. In other words, God has touched me, and the touch of God is upon my life because I have a purpose while I'm here on this earth. My friend... When you come into the anointing, into the presence of the Lord, and the Lord anoints you with the oil from heaven, and the Holy Spirit comes and refreshes your mind, your mind is open to the things of God. Your heart is open to the love of God. Your voice is ready to speak for the things that God wants you to speak. We need that anointing. Because the world needs that kind of spoil, that kind of speech from the from the people of God. They need to know, they need to be realized that God is alive and He's well and He's on planet Earth today and He's moving by the power of His Spirit. Sometimes we say, and I say it many times uh, myself, why doesn't Jesus come back? And set up, I would like some of these people put 
straight. I love to see it. That is my nature. That is the nature of man. To be able to do things the way that you like to see things to happen. But the nature of God is different. When the apostles asked Jesus when his kingdom will come, he said, mind your own business. That is only up to God the Father. He will decide when his kingdom will come. And the reason is because I want him to come today. Because I would like to see certain things done. God, he will come in his own good time. Because God is love. And his love wants everybody to be saved and filled with his power. Because he doesn't want anybody to die. So if he doesn't come today, just wait, he'll come. He'll come. He'll come. And but uh, that, uh, that, that's, that's uh, we will wait for. The love of God, the spirit, the anointing of God, it opens our eyes. It makes us explode our heart with joy into the presence of God. The glory of God by his spirit fills our spirit. And it, this is the wonderful thing about the anointing. The spirit of God and the spirit of man, they get together. That it's important because the spirit of man must be transformed and changed by the spirit of God so that we can do, think, and know what God wants us to do. Can I tell you a story? When I was a, a young fella, and by the way, I was a young fellow. It was a long time ago, but uh, yeah, I, I, I was there. We didn't have the money to take the streetcar to go to church. So we get together with some others living nearby, and we walked through the gardens and the streets, and we went to church. And we walked all the way because we wanted to save the money. But save the money that we didn't have, actually. But uh, that was the point. So by my place, to go to the church, we had to go by one of those big cathedrals uh, called St. John Cathedral. And those are huge, big, monumental churches. And uh, they, uh, especially when it's hot in the afternoon, summer day, you can go inside some of these places. It's nice and cool. They have no air conditioning, but inside there it's beautifully cool. So my friend and I said, let's go in. And we went in to cool off. But as we were looking around, there was a confessional there, and there was a, a little friar inside that confessional. And so we, to be good fellows, we went by there and we said, hi there, how are you? He said, I'm fine. I said, what are you doing here? Oh, he said, I'm doing God's will. Oh, that's good. How do you know what God's will is? He said, well, I know it. I'm a friar, and I? Oh, well, that's good. I said, what else uh, are you doing here? Because I don't see anybody coming, uh, queuing, uh, coming to talk to you. He said, how do you, and I said, we said, how do you know God's will? Well, he said, I do what the church tells me, and the church, of course, that's God's will. No, 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 no. You are doing what the church tells you to do. You are not doing God's will. God's will and the church will are two different things. Because God is one thing, and the church is another. I said, the only way that you can really know what is the will of God is to be able to read the word of God which is the New Testament, the Bible. Do you have a Bible? He said, of course I do. Down in the convent, it's three big uh, <clears throat> volumes like that. They're up on the upper shelf because they're very heavy and nobody ever brings them down. Well, I said, how do you know then what God wants you to do if you never read God's Word? To you know what God wants you to do, you have to read God's Word. By the way, it just happened that I have one in my hip pocket and I'll give it to you. Would you like it? 
Oh, yes, of course, I would like it. If I can find one that I can read all the time, he said, I would love because I want to do God's will. Anyway, from one thing to another, we begin to talk about God and talk about salvation. And uh, he said, oh, yes, of course. He said, I'm a friar. I'm going to go to heaven. I said, no, no. You go to heaven only if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Now, can you imagine two bunch of kids talking like that inside the cathedral? And anyway, we had the man praying. We prayed for him. We prayed for him. We had him standing up and raising his hand and praising the Lord. We gave him the Bible. Then I look at my friend. I took him by the hand and I said, friend, let's get out of here. If somebody else come, they'll fry up here. Then we're going to have a problem. So we run away. The things you do when you're young, and there's a lot of stupid things that you do. But do you think they were really stupid? I don't think so. I think it was an inspiration of the Holy Spirit that came at the moment because the door was open and there you are. So when the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, when the Spirit of the Lord is touching your soul, then you are doing the work of God. You're doing the things that God wants you to do. And the only way of doing the things that God wants you to do is to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. This church, we speak in tongues. The tongues is the language of heaven. You know, many times people talk to me and say, what language are we going to speak in heaven? And I always very, uh, say, of course, Italian, because it's the language of romance and love. But you know what? God is not a God of romance. God is a God of love. And the language that we are going to speak when we are going to go to heaven is the language of love, because God is love. And my friend, we don't need words to express that love because it's the emotional which is within us. You know, when you're speaking in tongues and your presence of the Lord is upon your soul, your mind is lit up with the light of God, your heart is filled with the joy and the presence of the Lord. You love everybody and you have no more enemies because the Spirit of God, which is the Spirit of love, is touching your spirit and transforming into a spirit of love. And you love everybody and you want to save everybody that is so when we go to heaven we will speak the language of love first Corinthians chapter 13 all of these things shall pass away but one thing shall stand forever and that is love so the more love we acquire while we are here the more love we acquire when we go we, we will have when we go to heaven what a glorious ministry he, Jesus said, he has anointed me. He has anointed me. He has touched my spirit and my soul. And he's done it for a purpose. He's done it so that I might be able to do the work that he wants us to do. It is time for me, with that anointed I have, to give the sight to the blind, to recover it, to uh, have the people that are sick to be able to be healed. It's time for me to preach the gospel of the good news. And that gospel of the good news is the gospel of salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. Hallelujah. I was thinking about something the other day. You know what the devil got it wrong? He uh, was enjoying the fact that Jesus was bleeding and had a crown of thorns and there was blood all over the place and, and uh, people were insulting him. And all the devil wanted is for Jesus to react, react, react. Go ahead, kill them, kill them, kill them. Send the angel, destroy them, do something. Because the devil doesn't have the language of love. He doesn't know what love is. So all he was looking at he was looking at destroy, kill, kill, destroy. But you know what? Jesus won because he was right on the other side. He was speaking the language of love. Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. Oh, glory. It is that love that makes the difference. It is that love that changed the life of the people. It is that love that will change the life 
of everything that is around us. And Jesus very clear said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The devil was saying, kill them, kill them. And Jesus said, forgive them, Lord. Forgive them, Lord. Forgive them, Lord. Then there was there a, a, a thief. And he, said, uh, and, and he said, come on, save yourself and save us as well. Do something, do something. The devil was inciting him. And Jesus turned and he said, today you will be with me in paradise. What a language. My friend, we have to start to learn a new language altogether. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon me, he comes to give me a ministry. And that ministry is to be able to bring the love of God and to preach salvation that the acceptable day of the Lord, which is today, not tomorrow, not next year, not when Jesus comes, but it is today. And we must realize it from the bottom of our heart. My spirit, when I'm touched by God, my spirit is filled. My voice fills the room with the expressions of songs before the praises, before the presence of God. I find myself surrounded. That's when I get in touch with the presence of God. And that's what happened many days when we are here in this church. We shall find ourselves surrounded by the people dancing in the spirit. We are charged with the love of God. Our bones get, cannot stay still. We must go and tell. We must do something. We must do something. He has given us authority. That Jesus said, He anointed of the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He anointed me. He has given me authority. The authority He has given to us. Because the authority is to be able to have... Uh, uh, to preach the gospel to the poor. The authority is to have compassion to those who are broken hearted. The, 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 uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the authority is to be able to preach or to announce eternal life and deliverance to those who are captive. And the, uh, the authority is to be able to give recovering the sight to those who are sin, uh, to those who are uh, blind. Give us liberty. To those that are being bruised and wounded by the presence of the world, by the world, and by that what the devil had done to them, it also gives us authority to tell to to tell all that today is the acceptable day of the Lord. That was what Jesus told to those people to do, and Jesus was very. Uh, straightforward in those kind of things. You remember when he went the, uh, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, before he was ascended, he said to his disciples, go to Jerusalem and wait there. Wait, 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 I say, and wait until you will receive power from heaven. My friend, why is it so important to receive that power from heaven? Because that is the power that changed the power of our spirit. And our spirit will be able to, uh, will be able to take care, to, to take uh, from the throne of God and be able to give to those who are around us and before us. Therefore, when you speak, you speak because the anointing of the Lord is upon your life. When you, pray, when you prophesy, you prophesy because the anointing of the Lord is upon your life. And whatever you do, my friend, you'll do it for the glory of God because the anointing of the Spirit of God is upon your life. And my friend, all I want to see is that the anointing of God, that fullness of the power and the glory and that fullness of the Spirit of God in touch with the spirit of man it will happen here right here into this place and will happen here because we are looking for it it will happen here because we are asking for it we are looking here because we want it to be here by the presence and the power of God then and only then whatever we do it will be done by the glory of God yeah Oh, mm. remember that. Mm. I am the breath of life. 
That is done. What a glorious ministry God has given you and me. He's a glorious ministry. That those who believe in him. To the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. They will accomplish those things. For the glory of God. You can accomplish those things. For the glory of God. We can accomplish those things. For the glory of God. Back into the synagogue. Was surrounded with people. They were believers. Because they were Israelites. And therefore they were believers. They believed in God. Like we are Pentecostals. And so we believe. And we believe in God. We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. But for some reason. They knew the scripture. They knew what the prophet were saying about the Messiah. But they did not recognize Jesus. Why? You know, my friend, I wonder if Jesus one day will just walk down that room, that, that door, comes right through here, and come right here in the, in, the, in the front. And then he said, here I am. I am anointed to come and to bless you. I wonder if we will receive him. Ah. I wonder if we will say, just a minute. The scriptures say that it's supposed to come this way. It's supposed to come that way. But you came in a different way. So how can I receive you or not receive you? I don't know. I'm very skeptical sometimes. I don't accept everything that comes around. So we have to be very careful as far as that is concerned. They did not recognize Jesus the Messiah because they wanted a Messiah according to their own wishes, according to their own understanding, and according to what they liked. And they did not like Jesus. They said, oh, isn't he, isn't he, isn't he the son of Joseph? Isn't Mary right with us in our neighborhood? And his brothers and sisters, and don't they all living around here? Who does he think he is to say that he's anointed to be the Messiah? See, they wouldn't recognize him. Jesus in John, first John chapter 6, verse 5, or oh, 5, 12, anyway, one of those scriptures. He said, I am the door. And nobody can come through, in or out. Unless you go to him. There are another group of people that at that time did not recognize Jesus. You remember those two disciples who were just leaving Jerusalem and they were going back home. It's just like the church was finished, the thing is over, let's go back home. So they were talking and they were talking and they were complaining actually. So there they are, I can imagine sitting in the car, my wife next to me or whatever. And start complaining about, I didn't like the song today because they were not really good according to whatever I really felt. And I didn't really like the preaching. There was something about it, you know. And then there was that lady got up and she started yelling. That really got me out. And the other guy, he started whistling. Oh, brother, that's it. I was out. I was better off if I was staying home. See, I want a church my own way. But when the Holy Spirit moved, church is not my way, it is His way. And what I want is a church that is not my way, but is His way. So the glory's glory be manifested among us. Anyway, the two disciples, they were talking and talking and saying all of those kind of things. And, and they were complaining actually. Then Jesus went. He get close to them. He started opening the scripture. Now that's something that is important, my friend, to be able to open the scriptures. And he began to tell them, according to the scripture, all the things that had to happen because for the Messiah, before according to the prophet, and so on and so on. They still didn't recognize him. No matter how much the preacher was preaching, we just wasn't listening. I was thinking about the roast I left at home. In the fire. Uh, and you know, something could happen. And so on Sunday, we don't have roast anymore. We have salad. 
Yeah, it's healthier for you anyway. Then they went to the table, something that we do every Sunday. And Jesus took the bread and he broke. The bread is the bread of life. The bread is the word of God. And when you rightly break the word of God, my friend, something happened. Something happened because the word will never turn back void. Will always do something. And as soon as the bread was broken, their eyes were opened. They finally remembered that he who was talking to them was Jesus Christ, the Son of God. How would you like to be in your room, and you're going in a car, and as you're traveling down, going home, you're thinking about the things of God. <clears throat> you're thinking about the things of God. And then all of a sudden you go home and you sit at the table and you pick up the bread. I mean, you do that all the time. We have a sandwich or something else. And you take the bread and you break. And as soon as you break that bread, suddenly the word that the speaker said, it come to your mind and to your life. Your eyes are open. Your heart is filled with the presence of God. Never mind eating or not eating was the difference. The bread of life. It is important that we know it. The same thing happened to Mary at the tomb, you remember. I don't go through all of those little things because I know that you know all of that. She didn't recognize him. She looked at him. She didn't recognize him. I wonder why. Because all she was thinking that Jesus was at the tomb when he was dead. She thought about somebody stealing him from the tomb, but she never thought about him being resurrected. So she wouldn't recognize him. Suddenly, Jesus called her by name. Then he said, Mary, Mary. Mm. Mm. She recognized him. How important it is to have that with the presence and the glory of God. I like when God calls up my name. I like when he comes into the room and even if I'm all by myself, I can hear my name and say, hey, Joseph, what are you doing? How beautiful it is. It is important that personal relationship and that personal relationship can come only by the upper room by the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. The only way to receive it, it is by receiving it. The only way to do a good job is to by be filled and be anointed or be touched by the presence of God. In Mark 16, 15, he says, He has given power and responsibility. And he said unto them, Go ye into the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe and is baptized shall be saved. He that believe not shall be condemned. This sign shall follow those that believe. <laughs> do you believe? How much do you believe? Do I believe? How much do I believe? The Bible said if I have faith like the mustard seed, things will happen. I can remove things just by saying them. But I talk too much. And the things move only by the language of God. And the language of God is the language of emotion and love. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with other tongues. Yes, my friend, we can be charged with the power and the glory of the presence of the Lord. Be glad it's page three already gone. Um, when the anointed come, things will happen. I remember going 
I was about 20 years old. And they told me to go to a mountain somewhere and to start a church. That was my trial for the beginning of the ministry. I didn't know what to do. I went up there. But of course I've been in college, but that means nothing. So I went up there and I began to have a lot of opposition. The opposition from the town. They all got together. They wanted me out. They put the petition to get me out. Get that guy from Rome out of here. We don't want him here. He's only causing trouble. I wasn't causing any trouble. I was only preaching the gospel. I was only talking to people about the things of God. But I was talking about the language of God. They were talking about the language of, well, if it wasn't God, it was somebody else. The language of hate. And you know what? I thank God that the language of love persisted and had the power to win. There is a church there today. And every so often I receive a little letter. Thank you very much for coming to our place. We are certainly happy. I mean, so many years have gone by. Sixty-five years. Sixty-six, sixty-five years have gone by since then. They still remember. There is still somebody there who is young. There were young fellows like that at that time. They're still young. They're still there. The church is still going on. And I thank God for that. The moving of the Spirit of God. God has anointed you to do His work here upon this earth. And my friend, don't say it's somebody else's uh, job because it isn't. I could tell you a few other things, but I'm not going to. Time is going. There is a story in the Word of God in which is very, very interesting. is in the Old Testament. The first book, the second book of Kings, chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. I think that Pastor Chris mentioned this sometime, long time ago. Is the story of the widow who her husband was a minister for, the, for God and he was working for the things of God, for the prophet, but he had died and he was left, she was left alone with her son. She had no thing to eat. She had nothing left over for she didn't pay superannuation and that is her problem. She should have paid superannuation, then she would have had something. But she didn't because in those days it didn't exist. And so uh, they, uh, they, <clears throat> she, went, she went and she went to, uh, she went to the prophet and she said, listen, she said, I got to talk to you. What happened? She said, my husband is your servant. He served you for so many years. He said, now he's dead and I'm being left all alone with my son. The creditors are coming because they want to be paid and they want to take my son as, as, a, as a slave, as a payment for the debts in which we have. Since the link is not coming with his benefits, and therefore I got problems here, and I, these problems are very hard, and I, I don't know what to do, and how I'm going to reach it. And the prophet said, what do you have? Well, what a strange thing. I just told you I have nothing. But just remember, though, I have a little bottle of oil, which I have kept it there. I'm going home. I'm going to make a little bit of a, a little bit of, no, oh, well, pasta maybe, huh? <clears throat> whatever. I'm going to make a little bit. And he said, then my son and I, we are going to eat it. And then we are going to lay down and we're waiting for the Lord to come and take us. That's an easy way to do it. And the prophet said, well, look, your husband was anointed, wasn't he? She said, yeah, he was your servant. Then he said, that anointing must have come upon you as well. I want you to do something. She said, what can I do? I'm only a woman. By the way, don't look at me uh, talking about her. <laughs> I'm, only, <laughs> I'm only a woman. And he said, well, go and get the bottle of oil and start pouring out. And he get, get as many vessels as you can and fill them up. 
So she went home, called her son, said, get all the vessels over here. The, the prophet said that I have to start pouring this oil. I don't know what's going to happen. That is not enough even to put a little bit of oil in, in every one of those uh, pot. He said, I don't know what's going to happen, but anyway, let us do it. She stopped pouring the oil and all the vessels were filled with the oil. My friend, I know that our pastor would like to see all the vessels of his church filled with the oil of God. I would like that. I would like that. And she kept pouring out the vessel, pouring out the oil, and there was oil, and all the vessels were full. Then suddenly there were no more vessels, and the oil stopped. How many vessels do you bring when you come to the presence of the Lord? How many vessels are we bringing when we come? If we bring few, few will be filled. If we bring many, many will be filled. If we feel, if we are living, we can have enough. And my friend, let me say you something, and then I'm going to quit. Aren't you happy? I am. We need that oil in this church in order to have miracles and wonders to happen for the glory of God. Let us bring as many vessels as we can. Let us all fill them up with the power of the oil and the spirit of the, the spirit of God. Remember what I told you is when that spirit get in touch with my spirit, they two touch together. Things happen in a way that we never, never even think of. And that's the day I'm going to wait. Let us stand together, shall we? Pastor Neil is gone.